it, it does come into mind, especially uh, uh, when you can see the appointment of uh, Comrade uh, Chen Chengguo as uh, oh, yeah. the party secretary in Xinjiang. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, who was Chen Chengguo? Well, uh, mm -hmm. in his uh, previous post, he was the uh, party secretary in Tibet in uh, right. uh, Lhasa and uh, he was there for five years as well and uh -huh. uh, during these five years uh, he is uh, kind of infamous for uh, creating a much larger uh, system of police surveillance uh, in Tibet as an example for example he would uh, divide uh, especially the uh, more urban areas like Lhasa into a, a kind of a, a grid system, if you will, with uh, more police stations being put uh -huh. up um, at certain routes to kind of watch over the population. So he's responsible oh. for uh, uh, basically <laughs> uh, turning Tibet into more of a police state than it has been before. Yeah. Into putting <laughs> more surveillance measures in place, including cameras, you know, so basically a whole system, you know, and he got really good at this. I mean, he had five years, you know, to, to do it. Uh, uh, nobody was going to tell him, no, you're taking things a little bit too far in Tibet. He's up on the issue. Uh -huh. right? I, I, I don't see oh, this I, very, very likely happening. Tibet was easy to suppress. Firstly, there are only like five, five million of them. And Tibetans are a minority. I think in their own land, just like the Uyghur side. No, no, no. There, there are. I think even now there are. Uh, or there were um, a few years ago more than ninety percent of Tibetans uh, living in Tibet. So not so many Han Chinese. But of course, we're talking ah. about the the entire uh, area of. Uh, okay, Xinjiang. Of Xinjiang is a minority, but Tibetans were not uh, like a violent people. They were like a, like a suicide. Just like a self immolation, but keep in mind, you know, a, a suicide when when you when you uh, kill yourself, not a kind of a suicide bombing. That's right. When you murder other people, that's right. That's the difference. So that was uh, that was an easy kind of job for for Chen Chen Chuang Guo, but anyway, apparently he must be he must be he must be seen as a must be seen as a success. Then he got. Kind of so promoting. otherwise he would not get uh, another posting instead we yeah, see him getting posted for another five years to Xinjiang and what he uh -huh. did uh, uh, in uh, five what took him five years in Tibet you know he would accomplish uh, maybe in a year in uh, Xinjiang after all he already knows how to do it how to how to set up a system okay so once that is uh, in in place it's, it, mm -hmm. it might be either be his own thinking, well, how can I improve the system? What can I do even even better? Better in uh, quotation marks. <laughs> this time around. And maybe also he was thinking, well, you know, um, uh, Xi Jinping might be, might be watching me. You know, and maybe he wants me, you know, t to do a little bit more than I did before. You know, uh -huh, to, uh -huh. because this might be seen as a more violent area, you know, which might kind of call, you know, for uh, more extreme solutions. And as a result, we get this. You can see okay. here, for example, in 2015, before Chen Chengu was around, there, there was nothing in this area. By 2018, we already see um, here some kind of uh, uh, an internment camp. And we would see so, these start popping up all over Xinjiang. Go ahead. So he took his job, took his new position, Chen Chuang Guo, in 2016. Uh, like Stay there again for the next five years uh, until uh, right. 2021. Okay, okay. So, and uh, in uh, apparently he, he declared that we will bury the corpses of terrorists and terror gangs in the vast sea of the people's war. And then he, basically in April 2017, everything was ready for the 
uh, mass arrests that had begun and on April 1st 2017 he gave the order and they started arresting people right left and center I heard that like the first order was to arrest like 20,000 people and they, they, they just couldn't fill in the quota so they were from house to house and they were arrested How scary is that and Okay, we don't, we don't have enough. We need five more. Okay, you come. Yeah, we need 5,000 more. So it just takes anybody, somebody. So they were taking like a totally innocent bystanders and just they were just arresting them because they had to fill in the first first quarter. It was like no, nobody would say uh, to the administration, well, we don't have so many suspects here because <laughs> then it seems like, well, it seems like maybe you're not doing your job well enough. Maybe we'll get to we'll replace with somebody who will. So you don't you don't see any any uh, kind of uh, pushback against the policies that started uh, to come uh, come in place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So these re-education efforts began actually in 2014, yes. but in 2017 everything was ready on a, to 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 do it on the ma mass scale, and apparently they proclaimed that these uh, camps that are, I think, correctly called uh, concentration camps. I think you, to be you can very well use this term because uh, they are used to concentrate uh, a mass people there for, yeah, for whatever reason. So this term is entirely appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. And just as Heinrich Himmler was the architect of Holocaust, uh, we can uh, clearly say that Chen Chuan Guo is the architect of uh, of the Uyghur genocide of this guy uh, setting up this kind of a uh, uh, basically an uh, extrajudicial internment yeah yeah For absolutely what he uh, the way uh, that he kind of divided the population or that, that the population was was uh, sort of put into certain categories for example of trustworthy mm -hmm. people um, uh -huh. regular or kind of undecided and untrustworthy people and it was with these untrustworthy people that uh, the, the government would try to find some ways of uh, handling them you know and essentially this uh, this meant putting them in some kind of uh, a correctional facility mm -hmm. let's say uh, we can say a concentration camp uh, and then I imagine, you know, having them uh, assign something that, okay, now we've been rehabilitated, we will be good, you know. Where right. if, even though the people might have not, not done uh, anything before, but maybe, you know, their neighbors could have reported them for something, you know. They could have been seen, they could have been somebody, some suspect's family. Nobody knows, you know. It, it, it was a very uh, kind of a broad range of criteria. The I the think they had quotas right from the beginning. The quota was 10%. Yeah, I think so they were like, we need to... Even even, even uh, Karl Marx said like a 10% of the people must be wiped out, you know, to like a kind of like a new social engineering. I'm not saying they were following Karl Marx's uh, capital, but, but it was 10%. See, see, yeah, you see, you see, um, it's, it's possible uh, because if you look at uh, the population of Xinjiang, uh, you know, uh, almost 26 million. Actually, Uyghurs are still the the majority, the major ethnicity. Okay, but very close to to Han Chinese. There are almost 45 percent Uyghurs and uh, you know around 42 percent of Han Chinese and around 13 percent of uh, others, including Kazakhs. Kazakhs, maybe some Kyrgyz, Mongols uh, thrown into the mix. Yeah. yeah right so they did manage to arrest minimum minimum 10 percent which is one million Uyghurs or one out of ten are. yeah yes every minimum could be t minimum is one million but could be up to three million that so minimum is one million that's that's the lowest estimated number they ended up in this concentration camps that started uh, they started rounding them up in 2017 and in 2018 to 2019 the number of the camps tripled uh, despite the 
Chinese were, for, for the beginning, they were denying they are nothing like the cans nonsense 2017 2018 they said okay okay there are some camps but they are training education trends uh, camps sure. you know there's sure we are, are just you know, keeping them you know i mean the if, you, if you're training them why do they have to be at a camp you know what kind of camp is it that if you are not allowed to go home for for years i mean that's nonsense a, i mean and they are born early they were saying that they, are, they, they came here voluntarily. I'm, I would here. imagine they made them sign something, you know, that I was here voluntarily and of my own accord. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> of course. I, 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 I don't know exactly what uh, how this was said, but we, uh, for example, here, from this map we can see that uh, there were several tiers and several kind of institutions that uh, were involved in this. Right. Obviously, there were prisons, which probably already existed uh, there before. Maybe some were new uh, okay. for criminals, but they would, if they have some empty space, you know, they can also be used to to uh, house uh, detainees. Then there would be administrative detention centers, which are normally used just for uh, drunk drivers in uh, other parts of China to go there for uh, a few weeks as a punishment. But uh, again, if there might be some space there, maybe we can use that, you know, put it to good use. And there would be re-education camps, which would be um, newly constructed. Or maybe they would reuse some uh, existing facilities. I don't know. Either low security, yeah. where maybe, you know, sometimes they might let you go home for the weekend. <laughs> or higher security, where you might stay longer without getting to go home uh, until you've... Uh, until the someone who would be in charge of uh, the camp would uh, uh, let you, would uh, right. deem you re-educated and not not a threat to uh, anyone. I, I just want to mention that what we are looking at now is a territory four times as big as uh, France or as big as Alaska. So, you know, it's easy, I, I don't know how easy, but I guess it's easier to uh, hide some things in such a large area, even if it's in a desert. Yeah, it's a desert. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why they build these facilities just on the edge of, of Xinjiang. It's difficult to reach. You know, the, the desert is right here, so you can kind of see them on the outskirts of, the, of uh, these deserted areas, at least in this part. Mm -hmm. Yes. So anyway, by, by 2022, China declared that all the detainees, all the students graduated. Look, Congratulations. All of these are graduated students, no matter that some of them are 70 years old, but, you know, never too late. Uh, to, for, 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 <laughs> Chinese education for free, yes. Um, apparently here they are gathered to to listen to some uh, communist speeches. Yes, I mean you know it's ironic. You know the government would be saying yeah they were learning some skills there, but uh, you know uh, a, a lot of that might involve you know listening to lectures about Marxism and things like that. And only Marxism. There was nothing useful. I think. Uh, I mean, so you know, by who knows? Yeah. We, we, we by twenty twenty two. The government declared that uh, some of the concentration camps were abandoned and converted to real schools, which mm -hmm. means they pulled down the walls, suddenly there was a normal fence, they destroyed the watchtowers, I mean uh, having watchtowers and building around the fence and putting on the walls a barbed wire was uh, the indication it was the concentration camp. I mean, keep in mind, you do see this sometimes in uh, around Chinese schools, <laughs> but usually it's not to keep the students in, as I used to like <laughs> to joke. But in this case, if you see guard towers there, yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're not trying to prevent people from coming in. <laughs> no, no, no. And, but it's, it would be quite the opposite. It was not for the defense. Yeah. And uh, next to these camps, actually, they built a uh, prison. So these people who graduated, most of them are in prison now. 
They were oh, removed. Wow, wonderful. Wow, 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 what a great graduation. I couldn't just, I couldn't wait to graduate. Yeah. So I could go to prison. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. So they were not released. Not all of them. Maybe yeah, some I understand. of them. Well, I, I would know. imagine, I would imagine most of the people would be released because, uh, you know, this is not a, a situation you can, uh, uh, on you can keep up in the long term I mean who's going to work there in the area you know it's it, it's just going to turn into a, a, a large prison camp at that point so mm. If, mm. I think you know uh, after maybe 2018 after there started to be more backlash uh, which we'll get to in a minute against this the government you know would try to kind of dial this down so maybe around two that was the was the <laughs> chinese government worried and they couldn't any longer control the narrative that's why they uh, uh they just closed some of the centers especially the centers that were close to the cities the other right. makes sense camps are still running yeah, the, the point yes. is, you know, um, uh, during the COVID restrictions, uh, you know, who would be allowed to go to China and look at the situation? Nobody, you know. China did try to allow some journalists to come into <laughs> these, uh, uh, some of these uh, institutes. And uh, uh, from there you would get these, uh, you know, basically ridiculous videos where they would only show, show the foreign journalists, such as from the BBC, what the uh, camp directors wanted them to see and it was so obvious so it, it actually uh, might have had the opposite effect it certainly looked very negative for china you know mm -hmm. like what are what are you hiding here you know, <laughs> what are you trying to hide when, when the nazi germans allowed uh, some people to go and visit their concentration camps for 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 the jews yeah and uh, you know later from the, the Jews, from the red cross for example yeah red cross yeah they they, they claim that uh, before there were like 12 people uh in one room and suddenly there were only four people dressed up nicely reading books and i don't know whatever just for the show just for the show it's ridiculous and the red cross would would you know send them some uh packages some food and of course <laughs> the prisoners they never received they, they never seen any of these things yeah. so naive so naive and you know because people are aware of what has happened in the past uh, you know it creates these kinds of uh, sad and dangerous parallels mm -hmm. yeah. I mean where yeah. where in the world would you think that you know in the, in the 21st century after we've seen the uh, concentration camps and uh, extermination camps in Germany. After we've seen concentration camps in the Soviet Union, and we could go on, we would see this, you know? I mean, you might imagine this in some countries like North Korea, but uh, I don't think anyone was expecting uh, that this would happen in China, you know? And this... No. I, I think uh, uh, China, the Chinese government was uh, surprised by the reaction of, of the world, but what were they expecting? <laughs> you know, exactly. that the world would not react? I mean, yeah. how, how naive can you be? They were just hoping, well, you know, you, we are just preventing terrorism. Well, yes, but they at, at what cost? By locking everyone up? They got away with... Uh, uh, with the Tiananmen massacre, they got away with the persecution and organ harvesting uh, of Falun Gong people. They thought they could uh, get away also with uh, concentration camps. Yes, but uh, and you know you have to you have to realize you know the more you stack up these things, the the more backlash it's going to generate if this keeps happening. Yeah, well, backlash is backlash. What happened to them? Nothing. Yeah, what happened this is, to them? This is the uh, yeah. This is one of the problems that uh, there has not been uh, a lot of. Uh, oh, here we. This is a, a good map because you can uh, see. This is the desert area. You can see the camps right around the desert, right at the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I. Uh, People are not uh, blind and stupid. They would, uh, 
they would realize, you know, that if some uh, companies, even foreign companies, you know, if they would purchase uh, products which are made by uh, the prisoners there or by the detainees there, because, you know, China would uh, be happy to use uh, uh, prison labor um, if, uh, if possible, because it's cheaper than <laughs> having to pay wages or pay more wages to workers. And so there, there cost- will be some, some uh, backlash against this, but that's it. The problem is how do you get, uh, you, you know, uh, how do you exert enough pressure on uh, uh, the government of a country as large as China? It's calculated that uh, uh, Chinese government spent about 400, uh, more than 430 billion dollars on building these concentration camps. So in China, nothing is for free. Somebody has to pay back. So why not use this uh, at least one million of uh, detained Uyghurs, you know, to for some cheap labor? So they could earn some money back. And China produces like 20% of the world cotton and 85% of the domestic because cotton. This is, you know, uh, this is a crop that it's easier to grow in Xinjiang than uh, a lot of other things. Yeah, and apparently it's very profitable. So uh, why not to use these people uh, after a hard day of uh, studying Xi Jinping's thoughts of uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics in the new era. So let them do also something you look for. Yeah. Yeah, they get to get some exercise. <laughs> this is what you what you said before. Yeah, this was one of the slogans on the uh, one of the buildings uh, we've seen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was. So it was not only the camps; they destroyed mosques all around Xinjiang, some of them as old as uh, as uh, more than 1,000 years old. Cultural heritage of these people, uh, education, they just basically destroyed all the all the Uyghur literature, Uyghur, uh, Uyghur language books. Uh, they forced uh, them to yeah, learn Chinese, of course, and uh, they detained academics, uh, religious figures. They destroy cemeteries, it's very old cemeteries. They forced forced marriages between Han and Uyghurs, mm-hmm. literally forced or or just through some. Yeah, kind of arrange something, you know. Maybe it would be a good idea now to marry a Han Chinese, you know. Somebody yeah. might suggest to move never, up in the world. Yeah. Never, never, ever offered any incentive measures just like some money for for newly married couples except in this case like uh, they offer like 10,000 10, yuan if a uh, Uyghur marries a Han um, Han man marries a Uyghur woman they offered some uh, I don't know some preferential treatment in employment housing free education and all this in uh, in incentives, but well, isn't it part of the genocide? What is genocide? Okay, let me let me check. They're not necessarily killing the people there, but uh, like you said before, uh, we uh, we can easily talk about cultural genocide because it is kind of destroying the culture, and there are some more sinister uh, things going on. Including we need to specify it. it is a genocide. Genocide is a crime of intentionally destroying part, just a part, or all of a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. Could be your own group. Doesn't have to be somebody else's group. Could be your own group by killing people or by any other methods. This is a typical genocide. In this case, it's they're, they're not uh, like I'm saying they're not killing the people there, but there have been uh, you know cases of torture and uh, including things like uh, you know forced abortions, which have happened in uh, other parts of China as well. But uh, 
it is estimated yeah. it is estimated that 10 of these uh, incarcerated people 10 percent of them were killed i mean it, we are talking about at least 100,000 people were killed disappeared and uh, we know that because they built uh, crematoriums next next to these camps the crematoriums, the people disappeared and they, the prisoners who survived, they were saying that just people were taken away and they never came back, ever, again. And there were no, there were no treatment, like people were sick with fever, they were, they weren't because, treated. Because this costs money and, uh, you know, I mean, uh, nobody's going to tell uh, once once these kind of policies are handed uh, from the top down either from Beijing or from uh, the uh, office of Chen Chengguo uh, who's going to tell the authorities y you know take it easy you know you're overdoing it a little bit too much well nobody well, because they might be seen as incompetent uh-huh and then yeah yeah absolutely you know, other things they were doing like they were discouraging or they were banned from wearing headscarves for the women because of that there were some also some uprising and people were again uh, detained killed even the killed they were shot dead young girls shot dead really? children names bent yeah 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 there were there was at least one uprising uh yeah no 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 ter ter terrible mass detentions in German camps this is the worst thing that's what we are talking about now uh, there were tortures okay let's talk about the tortures I mean the tortures were unprecedented this is this is this is the terrible horrible atrocities were done on these people for no reason I mean just just one case. there was a boy there was a man that uh, when he was a boy like he was nine years old and he attended some preaching